Item number, SCP-107. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-107 poses no immediate threat, so long as it does not come into contact with any liquid. As such, it is stored at Site-19 in a 5-meter square containment cell, on a 1-meter high pedestal, inside a clear perspex container. Experimentation with SCP-107 is to be carried out at Research Area 6, a 484 km squared or 22 by 22 km area of desolate land in dedicated to this purpose. Anyone who attempts to activate SCP-107 outside of an approved experiment must be eliminated with any force necessary. Access to and removal of the object requires the authorization of two Level 4 personnel and the approval by said personnel of a full experimental procedure. Should SCP-107 become active while within Site-19, two Class D personnel are to remove it from the site via one of the item transport trucks in Loading Bay 2. This procedure must be followed regardless of the substance that activated SCP-107, given the unpredictable nature of the item's effect on plant matter. SCP-107 should only be returned once precipitation has ceased completely and any abnormal plant growth has been neutralized or contained for further study. Description SCP-107 resembles the top section of a hollow turtle shell. The shell is composed of a hardened biological material of unknown origin. Despite its appearance, whether this material is derived from the shell of a standard sea turtle is, as yet, unknown. The item is completely inert until the inside of the turtle shell comes into contact with a liquid. When it does so, said liquid appears to be absorbed very quickly. Where the liquid drains to is unknown, given the lack of visible pores on the inside of the shell. Once active, the red edge of the shell glows dimly, and the substance placed into the shell begins to precipitate in the atmosphere and fall as rain in the area, at least 0.5 meters but less than 10 kilometers from the object. This phenomenon is mobile. Moving SCP-107 will move the area of effect, along with the exclusion zone. The duration and intensity appears proportional to the amount of liquid placed in the shell. 10 milliliters of water resulted in just under half an hour of light drizzle, whereas filling to around the three-quarter mark set off two days of torrential rain. Precipitation generated by SCP-107 has varying effects on plant matter. Although these effects are only seen in plants grown within the effect zone, watering other plants with collected liquid causes no abnormal reaction. Addendum 107-1 SCP-107 was discovered by an archaeologist, Professor M, in what is now Ethiopia, buried alongside what appears to be a tribal shaman. Carbon dating performed on the shaman's bones gave an age of around 18,000 BCE. SCP-107 proved resistant to all attempts to obtain a sample, and therefore, no concrete origin date can be determined. The Foundation became involved after intercepting reports of strange weather events at the dig accompanied by unusual plant growth. Addendum 107-2 Below is a log of all tests carried out with SCP-107. Agents with ideas for sensible future testing protocols should contact me. Please feel free to test reasonably safe liquids with SCP-107 and log your findings here. Please note that you will be responsible for anything that results from the test. We need all the data we can get on this oddity. More tests with liquid-based SCPs may have research value, but most are simply too dangerous to carry out, at least with current containment procedures. Tests involving SCP-107 and SCP-009, SCP-447-2, and SCP-874 have been proposed, but were rejected on the grounds that the results have the potential to be dangerous and or highly unstable. Dr. Quentin Input 10 milliliters of standard tap water Result: Light rain fell over the test site for 27 minutes. Tests on the water showed that it had no unusual properties. For at least two weeks after the test, grass at the test site was seen to grow at a much increased rate, and the resulting plants were a richer green in color than those unaffected by the rain. Further procedure. A sample of the rain was collected and used to water various other plants outside of the test site. Result: No effect was observed. Input. 55 milliliters of standard tap water. Result: Torrential rainfall over test site for two days, and an effect on the grass similar to that of the first test. Fruit-bearing plants grown in the soil of the test site grew very quickly, 
and bore much larger fruit than control plants. Effect had diminished considerably after three months. Input. Four cubic centimeters block of wood. Result. No effect observed. Input. 20 steel ball bearings of radius 2 millimeters. Result. No effect observed. Input. 10 milliliters of human urine. Result. Urine rained on the test site for 27 minutes with moderate intensity. Grass at the test site began to die. Any other plant species moved to the test site began to grow stunted passive pitcher insect traps, incapable of actually digesting insect matter. Subsequent input. 20 milliliters of human urine. Result. Urine rained on the test site for 3 hours and 42 minutes with slightly greater intensity. Non-grass plants grew larger, stronger pitcher traps, capable of digesting small rodents. Input. 10 milliliters of human blood, extracted from a Class D test subject. Result. A substance proven afterwards to be human blood with the same genetic makeup as the donating subject fell on the test site for 27 minutes. Grass at the test site appeared to die on contact with the blood, and began rotting within minutes. Any non-grass plants planted in the resulting soil began to mutate and grow large, greater than 20 centimeters across, carnivorous organs, similar to those of the Venus flytrap, Dianaea muscipula. When approached by Class D personnel, the plants were seen to data expunged. These organisms began to grow back after two weeks. Further testing with bodily fluids considered unwise. Input: 10 milliliter water with 5 grams of steel ball bearings. Result: Water was absorbed by SCP-107, and the standard reaction was observed in plant matter. Ball bearings remained in the shell, evidently having no impact on the test. Input: 10 milliliters liquid cyanoacrylate adhesive. Result: All liquid was absorbed by SCP-107 and partially cured cyanoacrylate fell on the test site for 18 minutes. It is likely that the reduced duration of effect was due to the curing of the adhesive whilst inside SCP-107. Plant matter grew sticky coating later identified as cyanoacrylate derivative. Coating was very effective at trapping insects and preventing them from damaging plants. Input: 10 milliliters of fresh orange juice. Result: Standard precipitation pattern. 27 minutes of drizzle. Fruit-bearing plants moved to the testing site began to grow an unknown citrus fruit, irrespective of plant species and despite the cold conditions. No ill effects observed from consumption of the fruit. Samples have been taken for further testing. Input: 2 milliliters of human saliva produced by a Class D test subject. Result: Substance later proven to be human saliva fell on the test site for 8 minutes. Non-grass plants moved to the test site grew small. 2 to 5 centimeter, spherical sacs along stems or thin branches. When the plant was approached by the test subject, the sacs violently expelled a saliva-like liquid towards the subject. Subject reported no illness or injury. Augmented plants began to die within three days. Input: 10 milliliters of 99.999% isotopically pure heavy water, D2O. Result: Standard precipitation pattern. 27 minutes of drizzle. Mass spectrometry of samples revealed a deuterium abundance of approximately 154 ppm, which is standard for natural water. Input: 5 milliliters elemental mercury. Result: Sample began to be absorbed, but was then re-exuded. Item number: SCP-121. Object class: Euclid. Special containment procedures. Containment Site 83 has been established outside SCP-121 to house personnel dedicated to the containment of SCP-121. The perimeter of SCP-121 is to remain fenced off from the surrounding area, with guards stationed along the perimeter at all times. Guards are to don local military uniforms and remain heavily armed at all times. Rotation of guards is to occur every four hours. The surrounding population is to remain informed that SCP-121 is quarantined due to persisting hazardous material. Warning signs are to be placed 75, 50, and 25 kilometers out along roads leading to SCP-121 to deter trespassers. Civilians who approach the perimeter of SCP-121 are to be reminded of the quarantine and forced to depart. 
Those who resist are to be detained for questioning. In the event that approaching civilians witness an active instance of SCP-1211 or 2, Class A amnestics are to be administered. Any meteorological data regarding SCP-121's anomalous effect is to be censored, and SCP-121 has been labeled a no-flight zone to prevent knowledge of SCP-121, 1, and 2. Site Task Force IOTA-71, Home Wreckers, has been established and permanently assigned to Containment Site-83 in response to the threat of SCP-121-2. They are to escort researchers interested in studying non-hostile instances of SCP-1212, as well as neutralize any instances that have grown to potentially lethal sizes. In the event of an attempted containment breach, IOTA-71 is to assist perimeter guards in the neutralization of the instance of SCP-1212. Any buildings within SCP-121 that develop into SCP-1211 are to be recorded and monitored at all times for transition into SCP-1212. Instances of SCP-1212 that become innately hostile upon transition are to be neutralized. However, passive instances may continue to dwell within the perimeter of SCP-121 for research purposes, until they've grown to a size too dangerous to contain or become hostile, at which point they are to be neutralized. Description. SCP-121 is the region of land occupied by the former town of Colorado. The town was home to roughly 6,800 prior to enactment of current containment protocol and holds roughly 3,000 buildings, both residential and commercial. Clouds above SCP-121 appear incapable of entering an area roughly 12 kilometers in diameter, instead passing around the area. It is speculated this is related to SCP-121's range of effect but it is not known how at this time. Buildings in SCP-121 will sporadically, no more than one at a time, with three weeks minimum between manifestation, detach from any foundations, and ascend into the air. At this point, these buildings are identified as SCP-121-1. Instances of SCP-121-1 ascend to a random height of a minimum of 45 meters. Regardless of the previous state of the building, Doors and windows become locked, and any potential entryways become barricaded by furniture inside. Forced entry has shown an increased ambient temperature of roughly 35 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of roughly 65%, but a lack of any further anomalous properties. Instances of SCP-1211 will cease suspension after a minimum period of 10 weeks, but may remain airborne for no more than 15 weeks afterwards. Instances do not show any abnormal levels of durability and near total destruction of SCP-1211 upon impact with the ground is common. After impact, the remains of instances of SCP-1211 will contain an ovoid object, approximately 1.2 meters by 1.2 meters by 2 meters, composed of materials consistent with furniture found inside the home. Examination of mostly intact instances of SCP-1211 show an absence of previous furnishings, the object will begin to locomote on its own accord. At this point, it will be referred to as SCP-121-2. SCP-121-2 begin to form a conglomerate with nearby materials, including debris from SCP-1211, flora, automobiles, and, on rare occasion, other buildings. SCP-121-2 will continue to attract objects until it forms a body of material 9 meters in height at which point the body will animate and appear to take on levels of sentience. SCP-1212 may, at this point, begin to simulate ingesting other material to continue growing at a considerably slower rate. Ingestion appears to be for the sole purpose of continued growth, as instances have gone prolonged periods of time without material. Certain items have been known to attach to SCP-1212 instantaneously, despite size and the lack of simulated ingestion. Instances of SCP-1212 normally resemble animals, capable of locomotion on land, but have been known to take on humanoid forms, and forms that do not resemble any known animal. They are primarily docile, and normally do not display hostility towards personnel unless provoked. However, SCP-1212 instances have been known to form with innate aggressive and territorial behavior. 
This behavior has also been observed to develop following the accumulation of certain items, including firearms, bladed weapons, and in one example, the taxidermy head of a bear. SCP-121 came to the attention of the Foundation when local authorities were flooded with reports of a previously abandoned residence suddenly flying in the sky. The town was evacuated under the guise of a hazardous material spill, and the residence was observed. Once the instance of SCP-1211 transitioned into SCP-1212, SCP-1212 was quickly neutralized. Following the neutralization, another instance of SCP-1211 developed, and the town was permanently evacuated and contained. This is the only occasion on which the creation of SCP-1211 has so closely followed the creation of an instance of SCP-1212. Incident 121A On 11.04.98, a sound, described as a muffled siren, was heard for approximately five minutes. An active instance of SCP-1211 was suddenly subject to an immense force following the sound, causing the building to prematurely break apart while suspended, before the ten-week minimum. Neighboring towns reported hearing the sound, Local press were informed quarantine staff were being evacuated due to a temporary elevation in toxic levels. The cause of the sound is currently unknown. Further research is recommended. Three weeks following the sound and the destruction of SCP-1211, the remains finally fell to the ground. Inside the rubble were remnants of the ovoid object found in SCP-1212, along with traces of aluminum slag. Incident 121B On 050912, a 1991 Dodge Caravan was found suspended 53 meters in the air. Internal surveillance is at this time impossible due to the windows being obscured by what appears to be wool cloth. Further observation of the vehicle is recommended. Item Number SCP-459 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-459 is to be kept unpowered in a standard security locker. The access code is to be changed bi-weekly and known to level 3 and higher personnel. As of 04-15-2000, testing has been indefinitely suspended. Proposals for use should be directed to 05 level personnel. Description SCP-459 appears to be a standard home thermostat. The item is equipped with a small display, four buttons, and two dials on either side of the screen. The two buttons on the right side raise and lower temperature, and the other two appear to affect relative humidity in the area. However, these buttons will only work when both dials are set to the off position. The left dial, dial 1, is marked with several standard weather conditions, including rain, snow, and data expunged. The fourth and fifth positions have been respectively designated T-Storm and Hurricane. The right dial, dial 2, has different settings, all of which are unmarked. The rightmost positions on each dial are the off positions. SCP-459 can, when wired to a heating and cooling system, modify weather patterns in addition to temperature and humidity. The area of effect appears to be about 1,500 square feet, or about 139 meters squared. The same amount as a modest home. How these effects are produced is currently unknown, as site-wide heating and cooling systems show no abnormalities in the area, even if the temperature is significantly different. Recent testing may suggest SCP-459 can access resources from other planets, and possibly other dimensions. Addendum 459-1 SCP-459 was discovered in a suburban home in after reports from neighbors of loud noises and bright flashes at night. Authorities' first attempts to investigate resulted in attracting the Foundation's attention. A group of agents with standard protection gear cut power to the house and proceeded to retrieve SCP-459 without incident, wherein all agents returned to site with the device. The bodies of the occupants of the home were recovered as well. Cause of death is officially listed as a gas leak. Test Log 459-2 Pre-testing note. The default settings are 20 degrees Celsius and 50% relative humidity. 
Doctor Name Doctor Date 316-2000 Temperature, humidity, weather setting 20 degrees Celsius 50% Dial 1 Snow Results After 127 seconds Rain began to fall in the testing area. Temperature indicated by SCP-459 is confirmed. Weather cleared after 20 minutes. Notes. I thought it would decrease the temperature. Well, I was half right. This is, functionally, ordinary weather and follows the same rules. Doctor Date. 316, 2000 Temperature, humidity, weather setting. 23 degrees Celsius, 75%, dial 1, 4. Results. After 47 seconds, dark clouds began to coalesce followed by moderate rain and occasional thunder. Wind speed inside the testing chamber peaked at 67 kilometers an hour. Weather cleared after 34 minutes. Notes. Nothing particularly unusual, though maybe we should have some weather gear close by next time we test this thing. Doctor Date 3-16-2000 Temperature, humidity, weather setting 26 degrees Celsius, 80% Dial 1, 5 Results At first, outcome appeared identical to second test But seven minutes after activation Weather conditions began to sharply deteriorate with heavy rain and winds reaching up to 162 kilometers an hour. Followed by Weather took over two hours to clear up. Site-wide brownouts reported. Notes. Let's not try that again. While watching a handful of sopping wet researchers being blown around a test chamber is, in retrospect, hilarious. My assistant getting electrocuted and the risk of site-wide containment failure put a bit of a damper on the whole thing. Dr. Date, 3-24-2000 Temperature, humidity, weather setting, 20 degrees Celsius, 50%, dial 2, leftmost position. Results, after 5 minutes of inactivity, Dr. exited the test chamber due to a spontaneous nosebleed. At 7 minutes and 32 seconds after activation, a breeze began to blow throughout the room increasing in speed very rapidly. After which, the view was obscured by large amounts of unidentified red material data expunged. Sensors clocked the wind speed at 428 kilometers an hour before they were destroyed. Data expunged. Entire east wing locked down. Weather did not subside for a week after the incident, and further testing was suspended until the test chamber could be fully inspected and repaired. Inspection of the chamber showed large quantities of ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and other chemical compounds known to make up Jupiter's atmosphere. Notes. Was that the red spot? Doctor. Date. 4-15-2000. Temperature, humidity, weather setting. 20 degrees Celsius, 50%. Dial 2, one turn from leftmost position. Results. D-Class personnel adjusted the device accordingly. After 742 seconds, data expunged. All further testing suspended indefinitely. Notes. It took three weeks to get the thing back, but it's completely undamaged. It's possible we could use this thing to help recreate natural environments for certain Earth-native animal SCPs. Dr. Item number, SCP-460, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-460 is to be tracked and observed by Mobile Task Force Mu-13, while containing any serious incidents as they occur. All relevant information is to be transmitted, encrypted, and backed up at Site-19. During any major ectoplasmic event, all personnel are to evacuate a minimum of five miles from SCP-460's current location. Description SCP-460 is a free-floating mass of cumulonimbus with an average diameter of 3.5 kilometers. 
Normally, SCP-460 takes the form of a large ring and is unaffected by standard meteorological conditions that a cloud of its shape and size would be. The composition of the cloud itself is typical, with frozen water, H2O, making up 98.7%. However, the remaining 1.3% of the cloud consists of a highly active form of ectoplasm, which lends to SCP-460's unique properties. Typically, SCP-460 is dormant, floating at a speed generally relative to the current wind speed of the surrounding area. Occasionally, SCP-460 will halt its movement, usually over an area of moderate population. Once completely stationary, the ectoplasm of SCP-460 will condense and fall as a viscous rain, causing the spirits of the recently dead to manifest in a physical form as ghosts. This rain occurs as a light shower after the main downpour, with only intermittent pauses. Normally, only subjects who have died within the last year will manifest, with only the rare exception. Of note is that not only humans are capable of returning as a ghost, but also all sentient life that possesses a purpose for their manifestation. Spirits that manifest in this have complete autonomy, while SCP-460 remains stationary and will revert back to whatever nature they possessed in life. The actual manifestation, however, varies on a case-by-case -case basis. Most subjects who return from a non-violent death are often passive and appear much like they did in life. Variations occur mostly among the spirits of those who suffered a violent end, with many victims of crimes, such as murder and rape, manifesting as ghostly avatars of justice. It should be noted that deaths caused as a result of SCP-460 would result in further manifestation. Over time, the ectoplasm making up individual manifestations will evaporate and rise back up to the main body of SCP-460. This may take anywhere from several days to a few weeks, depending on the temperature and general humidity of the area. Once SCP-460 starts moving again, any remaining manifestations are instantaneously vaporized, and the cycle starts anew. After becoming mobile, SCP-460 will wander for an indeterminable amount of time, with no pattern or common habits. Discovered in near Siberia, where reports of a literal ghost town had begun to circulate into the press at large. The number of ectoplasmic manifestations caused by the long-term stay of SCP-460 was overwhelming, and due to the violent nature of the now discontented spirits, a large military operation was required to secure the area. The surviving personnel now make up what is now Mobile Task Force Mu-13, aka Ghostbusters. SCP-460 was immediately classified as a Keter-class SCP, with all research diverted into predicting its movements to avoid further incidents. Addendum Due to the outcome, or lack thereof, of Incident 460B and 460C, item has been reclassified as Euclid. Observation Log 460A All relevant reports from Mu-13 are to be catalogued and formatted as follows. Subject Amy Glasgow, formerly a housemaker and mother of three. Date Expunged Location Expunged Liverpool Cause of death Auto accident Description Comparison to pre-death records showed little difference in appearance due to manifestation. Subject returned to former home, reconciled with husband and children. First noted case of premature dematerialization, a week before standard evaporation. Subject Richard Bellington, formerly a dock supervisor with ties to organized crime. Date Expunged Location Expunged New Jersey, USA Cause of death Drowning Description Overall manifestation resembled subject, but its clothing had changed from former work attire to an old-fashioned black-and-white prison uniform replete with a ball and chain around the left ankle. Subject observed going to a local police station and attempting to provide testimony to indict a local crime boss. Status of this investigation is ongoing. 
dematerialized normally. Subject: Alexander Daskovich, formerly an owner of a local bar. Date: Expunged. Location: Expunged, Russia. Cause of death: Cerebral trauma. Description: Manifestation resembled a monstrously strong version of the subject, demonstrating extremely aggressive behavior. Involved in an attack on owners of his former bar, leading to one immediate death due to extreme trauma. Two other deaths resulted after a fire inside the bar consumed the building. The cause of the fire is still unknown. Dematerialized shortly after. Subject: Kong Mu Shen, formerly a police officer. Date: Expunged. Location: Province, China. Cause of death: Heart attack. Description: Death occurred while SCP-460 was in the area. Subject attempted to apprehend a manifestation which promptly revealed his true nature. Cardiac arrest as a result of stress followed. Subject manifested normally, and after initial confusion, proceeded to operate as a law enforcement officer until dematerialization. Subject Alex Grawl, formerly a notorious killer. Date Expunged Location Expunged, Germany Cause of death Shot to death. Description: No resemblance to subject before death. Resembled a twisted, disturbing interpretation of a Norse troll. Manifested at place of death, a hotel where the subject had been gunned down by law enforcement. Subject proceeded to murder and partially cannibalize most of the hotel's patronage and staff. Neutralized and dematerialized shortly after by Mu 13. First case of manifestation of a long dead subject. Subject: James Strather, formerly a noted spiritual medium. Date: Expunged. Location: Expunged, GA, USA. Cause of death: Expunged. Description: Subject appeared incredibly vindicated with his immediate action after manifestation being to inform every single one of his critics of this fact. Dematerialized early, the first example of living beings able to influence manifested spirits on the physical plane. Subject: Spot, formerly a domesticated canine. Date: Expunged. Location: Expunged, Ireland. Cause of death: Unknown. Description: Subject appeared to be a manifestation of a mixed-breed dog of unverifiable heritage, wearing a small collar engraved with the name Spot. Upon contact with Mu-13, Subject interacted playfully with several task force members. Subject followed Mu-13 during the entirety of the session, dematerialized normally to the dismay of Mu-13, which had grown fond of its company. Item number. SCP-605 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-605 is impossible to contain with currently available resources. All Foundation efforts are currently directed at regulating its behavior and suppressing public knowledge of its existence. Foundation tracking teams are permanently stationed outside a 15-kilometer radius safe zone from SCP-605 and are equipped with large unmanned aerial vehicles that can be used in case SCP-605 enters an active state. Description: SCP-605 is a large, amorphous, and airborne gaseous entity visually similar to a high-altitude cloud formation approximately 180 to 260 meters in diameter. Its exact appearance varies drastically from being nearly invisible during its dormant phase, to resembling an enormous storm front while active. It has been observed to move slowly, but has not left the region bounded by the US state of Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda Island. While active, SCP-605 exhibits behavior similar to that of a living predatory organism, 
and will track ships and aircraft in its territory and attempt to engulf them in its body. The active state of SCP-605 also causes anomalous disruptions of the local magnetic field, causing compasses and other navigation systems to malfunction or report erroneous readings. When a ship or aircraft is completely engulfed by SCP-605, it is consumed by a method that is not currently understood, leaving no trace. All attempts to study this process to date have failed, as a successful feeding will cause SCP-605 to revert to a dormant state, usually for several years and as long as several decades at a time. And during this time, no anomalous readings can be detected. Due to SCP-605's ability and its presumed link to multiple disappearances of civilian and military assets in the past, the use of unmanned aerial vehicles to feed SCP-605 has been approved to reduce the chances of publicly known incidents. Addendum 605-1 Analysis of recorded data regarding SCP-605 have shown a minute but detectable increase in the calculated mass of SCP-605, with spikes consistent with known dates on which SCP-605 entered an active phase. Request for further study and possible countermeasures have been filed and are awaiting O5 approval. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.